had to feed. Glory to God as you're joining in, you can share this broadcast. As you're joining in, you can share this broadcast. As you're joining in, you can share this broadcast and say, Lord, I received the prophet's reward. Now, saints, I'm talking to you about becoming trustworthy in God and being trusted by the Holy Ghost. Two of them are two different realms. Number one, being trusted by God is something that's already established because you have already proven yourself. But becoming trustworthy means that God has a series of things that he's going to let you encounter, see, hear, experience so that you can validify why he should trust you. Why he should invest that level of trust in you. You're only anointed at the level of trust. You're only anointed at the level of trust. So God is only trusting you at the, le he's only anointing you at the level that he trusts you. Because remember, this is his power. You could do anything with his power. You could do anything with the information he gives you. You can manipulate, you can, you can destroy, you can corrupt, you can um, take out of context. There's many different avenues you could take the anointing. Now, saints, like I said, you know I believe in the demonstration of the Holy Spirit and power for miracles, for the release of angels, for the release of healing, for the release of prophecy, and all those different type of things. But the anointing is, that is the, de that is the visual, tangible realm of the anointing. The anointing is really what God teaches you. It's information, it's word. So if you receive a word about restraining your anger and you receive that word as truth, you have just received an anointing. Are you seeing this? So you just received the anointing the minute that you have decided to take information that restrains your anger. You have just received the anointing not to be dominated by the emotion of anger, not to mishandle anger. Once that happens, now you are anointed. That means that you have been empowered by what you have heard. So that's what the anointing really does in a solidified way. If people look for the anointing in the realm of a feeling, that's why you can die off because there's going to be times where you don't feel anointed, you don't feel the anointing, but you have the information that is anointed. And if you stick with the information, the anointing will be felt eventually because it's tied into you being a steward of the information you have. Are you seeing this? That's why people go into sin if they say, I'm getting bored with God. I don't feel nothing is happening. I'm seeking him. I don't feel nothing. But what you don't understand is that there's already anointing in you, on you rather. I, I won't say on you. There's anointing on you for you to even identify that you should seek God. Are you seeing this? The fact that you even thought about seeking God and people are not thinking about seeking God, there is an anointing that is upon you that you have not identified with. So a lot of times people are looking for the anointing with a feeling when they already have an anointing, the fact that they're hungry for God and they want to experience God, it takes an anointing for you to even want that as a desire. And you have to learn to celebrate where the anointing is flowing already. Okay, you might want an anointing for miracles, right? But look at the anointing that you have to even desire to flow in miracles. You got to celebrate God for that type of anointing. Like some of you are listening to me right now. There's an anointing 
for you to listen to what I'm saying. There's an anointing for me to say what I'm saying. The fact that you are you may be in sin right now, right? But you got to celebrate the fact that you would tune in to the words of God. So God will give you a chance to be trustworthy. Look at that word, trustworthy. Trustworthy is a compound word, worthy of trust. Trustworthy, worthy of trust. So think about this, people of God. The Holy Spirit will give you an opportunity to be trustworthy. Worthy of trust. That means that you have shown God that his trust is worth everything to you. Trustworthy has so much mysteries in that compound word because it shows that impressing God is worth more to you than anyone, anything. You want to make sure that God sees you operating in his image 24 seven and that your reactions and your responses to life, to people is always in the appearance and the way that God wants it to be. Now, saints, I want to say this to you, that not everybody is trusted by God, but he still gives you a chance to be trusted. How does God give somebody a chance to be trusted? He will expose you to information. How you handle information will decide whether or not God can trust you. Like right now, as I stand before God, I know it's not nobody business that I really don't know, especially in the preacher world. I know everybody business, but God knows that I'm not no babble mouth. I'm not trying to destroy nobody. I'm not in competition with nobody's ministry. I don't take no pride in nothing that is opposite to the Holy Ghost. So God could talk to me about things because he know that I'm not no fool. He know that I am of his wisdom. He know that I am of his spirit and he know that I am of his love. So when the father want to talk about stuff, he can come talk to me about it because he know I'm not petty. He know I'm not trying to impress nobody. When I say impress nobody, I am trying to impress somebody because that's the law of success. When I say I'm not trying to impress nobody, I mean in the realm of I'm not trying to get nobody to side with me over somebody else because they're going through a hard time. That's what I mean by that. And, and that's a good point that I want to leave just right there too. I just said something briefly, but I want you to remember that. You're supposed to impress somebody in this life. If you don't want to impress nobody, you it's not like you are anointed and wise. You're just stupid. You're supposed to want to impress somebody because there are people that God has scheduled to favor you. And if you're not impressive, you're going to mess up the favor, even though that's God's will. You're supposed to care about the what the right people think. The right people. Like the right people, you should care about what they think. Like you go to your boss and you be like, I don't care about what my boss think. I know God loves me. No, no but your boss has hired you and given you a paycheck. You should care about what they think. If they think that you're coming into work tardy, you should change how they think. If they feel like you're causing trouble in the workplace, you should change how they think. You see, Joseph cared about what Potiphar thought. Joseph got promoted by Potiphar. It was the favor of God, but it was the favor of man because he impressed the man so God could speak to the man and tell the man to promote him and the man would do it because the man saw fruits of trustworthiness in Joseph. See, that's why a lot of children of God sometimes, they don't get favor because they, they got this mentality. I just care about what God think about me. I don't care what you think about me. But if, if God wants to speak to me to bless you, <laughs> 
I'm going to resist God if I can't see God in. <laughs> I'm not talking about me per se. I'm just using myself as an example. I'm not talking about me per se. I'm just using myself as an example. What I'm saying is a lot of times people are hearing God tell them to do stuff, but then they look at you and they see how you acting. They see how you handling situations and they could shun God's voice. Like, for instance, you know how many people, like somebody might help them out with their rent. Somebody might help them out with their car. Somebody might help them out with clothes. You you know the spirit of stupid when somebody come up to you and say, I know that it's not you that did it. It's God that did it for me. <laughs> you, you know, you know, it, it, a man can't do nothing without God. The only reason why you able to pay for this house for me it was because God did it. It wasn't you. So I'm not going to praise you. I'm going to praise God. God be looking at you wanting to slap you, back slap you, take you back around all across the world, back slap you all across Jerusalem, back to Africa, all the way to Australia, down to Europe, down to China. God be wanting to back slap you all the way from the hood to the suburbs, to the movies, to the smoothies. That's a person that don't know the wisdom of being trustworthy and trusted by God. Because what you should realize and celebrate the person. Because they are the body in which the blessing is coming from. God is not looking at you and saying, oh, don't worship them. Don't praise them now. No, God loves that. God loves that. God loves the unity. God loves honor. He loves respectfulness. He loves when you acknowledge people that are being good to you. Saints, um, I have been on, I, I, I haven't been on a lot of TV shows. I've probably been on a couple, probably one. I won't say one, I, just to be safe. But if I have more than one, I, maybe I missed it. But just to be safe, I know that I've been on one TV show. Do you know that whenever anybody shows me any type of favor, do you know that I out of the blue tell them, thank you for the time in which you have favored me. Thank you for opening that door for me. Thank you for that. People don't do that. And saints, do you know that I have had experiences in my life where people have said, I have done this for many a people, but I never have heard heard somebody come back and say thank you and I have done more for them than I did for you I have invested more in them than I have invested in you but you came back and said thank you saints do you know that some of you all need to repent because you never told your boss thank you you took the paycheck like everybody else in the workplace and you didn't tell the boss thank you now, since God is watching how you handle unrighteous mammon. In the book of Luke, it talk about if you can't handle unrighteous mammon, how God going to trust you with the true riches, the true riches. And some of you all, you don't understand that even though people are unsaved, if they are a part of your blessing equation, they're a part of your generosity equation, your honor equation. If you don't know how to treat them, God is watching you at a distance and say, what if I come close to you? That's how you're going to do me. You don't even know how to celebrate somebody in the natural realm. How are you going to do me in the spirit realm? We don't think about stuff like that, do we? Because we lack wisdom, right? until it's given to us. We don't think about stuff, how God watches, how you deal with people with flesh and blood, because if you can't handle them and they in your jurisdiction, they in the earth realm, how are you gonna deal with God Almighty? His standards are way higher and he uses the natural realm to train your mind in the, in the mastery of righteousness. He uses the natural realm so that you could get acquainted with submission and honor and respectfulness. 
He uses the natural. So sometimes people be like, hey, I'm not listening to no natural man. I'm only going to listen to God. No, no. But God not trying to get you to listen to him up close and personal, because if you can't handle the natural realm, you showing God that you don't got the right spirit. And he don't bring people near to him. If you can't handle things according to the natural, you sure can't handle things according to the supernatural. And people think that they can, but you have deceived yourself. He uses the natural realm to discipline you. Saints, I remember one time I got stopped by the cops. The cops were asking me, why are you going this speed? Why are you going this stuff? You think I had an excuse? You think I disrespected the cops? You think I talk back to the cops? I could sit right there and say, hey, I'm a man of God. Don't listen. Don't talk to me like that. You know, the earth is the Lord, the fullness therein and all that dwells within there. Do you know that there's a higher authority than cops? Do you know that I'm an officer myself? I'm in the office of a prophet. Meanwhile, God is not up there clapping his hands and saying, yes. Woo, 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 woo. Look at my son. Look at my son. T tell it, son. Tell it. God look at you like you need some more training. I can't bring you to the next level of assignment because you're not there yet. Are you seeing this? Your whole life is full of opportunities to impress God. Do you know that God will let you know somebody's secrets and see what you do with it? You know what people do with people's secrets? They go call somebody, you know, and I found this out. And guess what? You know, da, da, da. and while you're doing that, God is watching you like, uh huh. Yeah. People don't look at God like he's a person and he sees everything. Proverbs chapter 15, verse three, it says that the eyes of the Lord watches over the good and the evil. Proverbs chapter 15, verse three, Psalm chapter seven, verse nine says, and for the righteous, he tests their hearts and reigns. I'll explain that in a little while because reigns represent the depth of the heart. That's dealing with motive, intent, premeditation, reigns. He tests the heart. That's the visible thing that you're thinking. But he tests the reins, the root of why you're thinking that. What caused you to think like that? What are the experiences and the events that have formed you into that type of thought life? Are you seeing this? That's Psalms chapter 7 verse 9. Psalms chapter 11 verse 5 says that the Lord tests the heart of the righteous. The Lord tests the heart of the righteous. So here's what God does. When somebody is considered righteous, God tests their heart. He tests their heart to see how far are they in righteousness. What is righteousness? It is the agreement with the Lord. Remember the word of God said, how can two walk together lest they be agreed? Agreement. It says two or three of you touch and agree on anything, God will do it. That agreement, Psalm 133 talks about agreement, the unity, how God gets pleasure, how he commands the blessing when he sees agreement. But the agreement with God, the Lord will challenge you to see how much you can agree with him. So Psalm 7, 9 says that for the righteous, he tests their hearts and reigns. He tries their hearts and reigns. In another text, it talks about him challenging their hearts and reigns. In Psalm 11, 5, he talked about he tries the hearts of the righteous. So he's looking at your soul. What is your heart? It is your soul. Your heart is your soul. Many people don't understand that, but your heart is your soul. Your spirit is the place where God has stored all godliness if you want it. So watch this here. If you want to overcome smoking, you already got the power to overcome smoking in your spirit. When you start entertaining the spirit, you could stop smoking ASAP. Because you know what the spirit going to lead you into? Loving the word of God. 
The spirit going to lead you into going on a fast. If you can't break an addiction, go on a fast, dog on it. The spirit going to lead you into disconnecting from people that's empowering the bad habit. There's so much wisdom in this broadcast. I hope that you share in this broadcast. And I want to thank all of you all so much for always sharing my broadcast, for supporting me, for helping me out. I want to thank all my partners, everybody that's in this ministry that helps me. Thank you so much. Listen, I want to take this time also to invite you. If you're a bishop, if you're a pastor, if you're an evangelist, if you're a prophet, if you're a child of God, if you're hungry for a move of the Spirit, if you want to experience the fire of God, come to the Welcome Holy Spirit Fire Conference. I'm going to demonstrate the power of the Holy Spirit there. June the 4th, June the 5th, Cleveland, Ohio, 777. Is at the West End. Who know that address? Saint uh, uh, seven seven seven. Who know the address? Somebody gonna write the address, and I'm gonna piggyback off of them. But I invite you to the conference. We just got a beautiful venue. It's gonna be powerful. I want you to come. It doesn't matter where you are. Make the investment to come to this meeting. Your life will never be the same again. Saints, I can't tell you there are countless amount of testimonies of people, whether they were suspicious of me or whether they was in opposition to me. When they came to my meeting, they were set free. They felt the power of God. They saw that it was real, that it wasn't no floozy. And all of them, I never touched them with my physical hands. God wanted them to have an encounter themselves with his glory. The glory going to be so thick in there. In every conference that I do, I do it strategically. I don't do it according to just capability. I do it because the spirit said do it. The spirit told me to do this meeting, right? And it's going to be a blessing to you. 777 St. Clair Avenue, Northeast Cleveland, Ohio, 44114. 777 St. Clair Street, Northeast Cleveland, Ohio. If you're a pastor, if you're a bishop, if you're a prophet, if you're an evangelist, you're welcome to come. We want to honor you. We want you in our midst. It's going to be a powerful impartation. Nobody has to feel uncomfortable. You don't have to worry about nobody violating your, 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 your dignity, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes people don't come to meetings because they think like it's going to be a wild man just throwing people down. No, no. If you don't want to be prayed for, blessed be God. Ain't nobody going to be praying for you. I ain't going to be beating you up. You ain't got to worry about that. I don't operate like that. Um, it's a peaceful, loving environment. You don't have to be scared that I'm going to rip your wig off. You ain't got to be worried that I'm going to rip your stockings. You ain't got to worry about all that. This is going to be a move of the Holy Ghost. And if you're hungry and want it while you're there, you can receive it. Other than that, you can just experience King Jesus up close and personal, his manifest presence, his manifest glory. And it is amazing. Glory to God. Glory to God. I want you to be there June the 4th and June the 5th. Make plans to be there. If you got to borrow money, borrow money. Get there, saints. It's worth the investment. It's worth the investment. And after every service, I'm going to be eating with you. You'll get to meet me. I want to talk with you. I want to meet with you. I want to mentor you. It's going to be amazing. I want to talk with you about deep and spiritual things. And saints, I'm going to be talking about some strong matters in this conference. And I'm going to be prophesying into your life in a strong and mighty way. And I want you there, and I'm gonna be teaching the word even more so. You're gonna get to hear some things that you never heard before. And I'm gonna talk about realms in the spirit. I'm gonna talk about dimensions that you go. I'm gonna talk about how to release healing. I'm gonna talk about how to release the prophetic anointing. I'm gonna talk about how to receive words of knowledge. 
I'm going to talk about how you can be inside of a grocery store in the same aisle and God could give you a word of knowledge about somebody in that same grocery store. I'm talking about living in the spirit, walking in the spirit and having a glory upon you every single day. Last but not least, let me just say this. Trust worthiness. It happens because God sees that you know how to handle yourself. You know how to manage information, steward information correctly. Do you know if God tells you somebody's business, he's looking at you to see what you're going to do. You're going to destroy them. You're going to help them. You're going to oppose them. You're going to create enemies for them. Are you going to intercede for them? Are you going to cry out to God for their deliverance? What are you doing with the information? Saints, I got people in my ministry. Me as a seer, I know what people do. I know what they're doing. You know what I do? I don't voice their stuff publicly. I don't say, hey, you know so-and-so in the ministry. You know them, you know them, bop, 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 bop. I don't do that. You know what I do? I cry out to God for them. I seek God for them. And even more so, I teach them so that they can come out of the very thing that God is revealing to me that they are stuck in. Are you seeing this? I take the time to teach them to release the anointing. Somebody said, Latanya, I want you to come, Latanya. Come, Latanya. It's going to be powerful for you. The time of the conference is uh, 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. on June the 4th, Friday, 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. And on Saturday is going to be uh, 12 noon. And then in the evening, it's going to be 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. After every service, I'm going to be meeting with you all. It's going to be powerful. Saints, I've never had somebody come to my meeting and not and want to go back home. People have always begged for another day, for another service. It's going to be powerful. And I'm going to be there Friday and Saturday. And let me tell you something. Don't miss it for nothing. Don't miss it for nothing. Saints, if I was you, Gotti, I want you to come. Come, Gotti. I want you to come. I invite you personally. I want you to come. It's going to be in Ohio. Bring somebody too. Bring somebody too. I'm not opposed to you bringing somebody. I want you to be there. I want you to be there. Bless you, Brandy. Bless you, Brandy. I want you to be there. Saints, I'm going to tell you like this here. Uh, this glory that I'm releasing at this conference, I have never done it in any of my conferences. But I've saved the best for last. If you have never been drunk in the spirit, if you have never felt the fire of God, the power of God, saints, there's going to be so much angels in that room. And it's not nothing scary in the sense like you go, oh, I, I don't want. No, no, no. The Lord is going to be there to help you to add power to your life, add glory in your life so that you can fulfill your assignment on earth and for you to eradicate Satan's plans for hell, for destruction. Everybody, you can bring your family. Kathy, I want to see you. I want to meet your family. I want to see all of you all. It's going to be a good time together. See, saints, even though I'm doing this meeting, it's like family meeting up. Because I'm your family. I'm your family. And I want to be there loving on you in a heavenly way. In a supernatural way is going to be life-changing we family so i want you there i don't care where you at 
Some of y'all be watching me from Nigeria. Y'all need to come. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Those of y'all that watch me from Africa, from London, from Europe, come. I don't care where you watch it from. Come. And don't be scared. Don't be scared. You don't have to worry about nothing in the presence of Jesus. Let me just say this to you, people of God. I'm not going to embarrass you. Like, if you come to my meeting, you got a mask, I'm not going to say, hey, take off your mask. I'm not going to embarrass you. You see what I'm saying? But, saints... Let me just tell you something. I've never been affected with coronavirus. I go out in public. I go places, but I'm led by the spirit. I don't just go places, all right? I'm led by the spirit, right? I've never been affected with coronavirus. My sons come to me all the time. I never take a coronavirus test on them. I never make them wear a mask around me. I never got coronavirus. I've gone public places. I go public places. I don't get coronavirus. I am immune to coronavirus. Somebody asked me the other day, have you taken the coronavirus vaccine? I said, what's that? I said, huh? They said, have you been vaccinated? I said, yes, I've been vaccinated. <laughs> because I've been vac vac vaccinated by the power of the Holy Ghost, the word of God, and I can't get sick. Have I been sick in my life? Yes, I've been sick in my life. But King Jesus took away all my diseases, took away all my sicknesses. The Father healed my body completely, and I'll never be sick another day in my life. So I want some of you all to understand this. Even if you come to this meeting, right? If you feel that you're sick, you're going to be healed because I'm going to join my faith in your situation, and the Father always hears me. The Father, the Holy Ghost, always hears me. Le masondo, le brusta, rande ve sole le via. Lo bocole ve diondo. The Holy Ghost always hears me. Those of you who are coming here, I don't care what situation you got. If you come to this meeting in a wheelchair, I'm going to pray for you. If you come to this meeting with a walker, if you come to this meeting lame, blind, I'm going to pray for you. And the power of God going to do the work. The Holy Spirit going to get the glory. And that's all that matters. That's all that matters. Don't have no fear. I want to meet with you. I don't do this all the time. I only do it when the Holy Ghost says, let's do a meeting. Saints, I want to I share a fun fact with you. I told my people that my... My social security number in the spirit is 777. I told my people days before I announced the conference, before I even established that I was doing the conference in Ohio. Watch this, people of God. So my code, my, my social security number in the spirit is 777. My username when I started off on social media was Joshua Holmes 777. The spirit told me that that's my code in the spirit. I saw it. I experienced it in the heavens. And I revealed that to my people. The conference number that I'm doing. If you look at the venue's number, it is 777. I just got the conference after. I revealed this to my people. You understand, people of God? If you look at the natural conference number, it is 777. It got my social security number in the Holy Ghost, in the heavenlies, in the spirit realm, in eternal life. It got my number on the venue. That's how real Jesus is. And then I taught my people about the number 21. I have prophesied worldly events 
and said that things were going to happen on the 21st. And it always happened. I prophesy about the impeachment trial that happened a year ago or so. And it happened on the 21. There's many other scenarios that happened in the earth that I prophesied on the 21st. And it always happened. I taught my people about the power of that 21st number. And guess what? The venue is 777, which equals 21. See? Bless you. Let God trust you. And the way that he trusts you, he's going to put information in your hands. Be a wise steward with the information. Don't hurt people. Don't destroy people. Don't be immature. Walk in wisdom and behave wisely with every information that God gives you. Remember what David did. The Bible said he behaved wisely. Jonathan, he behaved wisely. Peter, James, and John, King Jesus said, don't reveal this secret to nobody of Elijah and Moses on this mountain until I release you. That was an opportunity to be trusted, trustworthiness. Abigail did not reveal what she did for David to everybody. She knew how to be trusted. Rahab was trusted. She was trustworthy. She did not expose Joshua's men in her house. She did not get them killed. She protected the will of God, the work of God. Rahab, even though she was a prostitute in the natural, she was loyal in the spirit. She was a whore in the natural, but she was loyal in the spirit. Imagine that and got her whole house saved. Be trustworthy.